Come on and shine, shine, shine. Las Vegas, shine your light on me. Welcome to Las Vegas Tonight. Join award-winning host Dale Davidson as he interviews the most remarkable people you'll find in the entertainment capital of the world. You'll meet entertainers, sports figures, newsmakers, community and business leaders, and people just like you with stories that'll touch your heart. Now, here's Dale Davidson. And welcome to Las Vegas Tonight. I'm your host, Dale Davidson. Each and every week at this time, we bring you fascinating guests. They're usually from Las Vegas, not always, but in this case, he fits the bill. Not only a fascinating guy, but also from Las Vegas. His name is Zach Wexler, and he is senior pastor of Encounter Church right here in Las Vegas. Zach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, nice you bet. Here, yeah. yeah. So how long have you been in Vegas? Well, since I was 12. Wow. So quite some time. So you're the native almost. Yeah, almost, yeah. almost. Yeah. almost. Yeah. Where'd you come from? Denver, Colorado. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I went to DU. Oh, okay. In fact, yeah, Great. I got, got a degree from the University of Denver. Nice town. Great city. Yeah, yeah, nice town. Love it here, though. Yeah. It's home. You know, it's funny. When I first got here, I wasn't sure. You know, it's like Vegas. What am I doing here? Right. But within a year, it really became home, and it's such a church community. A lot of people in the world don't know that, you know, and Absolutely. yours is a fairly new one, very hip church, very, very uh, cutting edge. Uh, it's called the Encounter Church. Tell me uh, why you started the church. Well, you know, probably like a lot of people in ministry, there was some things that we're frustrated with, you yeah, know. Yeah. And I've learned that sometimes the frustration, instead of criticizing the lack, God's right. calling us to become the more. And I so like I, that. we yeah. kind of came to a place where like, well, let's let's try to make something happen, you know. Yeah. Of course, not in our own. We really felt called. We mm -hmm. felt like God was calling us, but mm -hmm. um, so we said, you know, what what does church look like? What's real fellowship? What is outreach? And these things that we do in our cultures. Mm -hmm. And we felt like we were missing some things. I mean, we really had great experiences in yeah. church. And I wasn't raised in the church. I didn't become a Christian until I was 17. Wow. Um, so we really felt the pull on our hearts to see something real, to really affect people's lives. Sure. And, and real connection, uh, not just coming on a Sunday and rah-rah energy, but yeah. meeting face-to-face yeah. -face -face and heart-to-heart. Yeah. And uh, we love big gatherings, you know, we're not opposed to that at all, but you know, we just, we really wanted to see something real and organic and yeah. free. Yeah, I, I uh, on your website, which is, what's the address? EncounterLV.com. EncounterLV.com. Yeah. Um, your basic mission statement, where you, or at least what you talk about being, and you say Encounter Church Las Vegas is a community of people whose desire is to release the love of Jesus. We welcome all who desire to experience the love of God. So you're non-denominational and yet you're fairly traditional in terms of what your mission really is and what your faith really is. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, we really believe in, uh, we believe in the church. You know, yeah. the local church is powerful and a community of God's people that can really be a refuge to people that that need family, that need, and that's what really the church should be, is family. Yeah. Uh, not just an organization and hierarchy and all that. You know, yeah. we've all experienced that to a degree. And and so, yeah, we, we really believe in the love of God, that mm -hmm. that's what transforms, heals, and sets the captive free. Mm -hmm. We kind of have a saying, you know, love people for who they are, and they'll become who they're created to be. Uh, um, and like so, that. you know, we're all about the love of God, and, and we like the, the ancient truth of the church that really God showed us what love looked like in the person of Jesus Christ and sure what he did, did his sure work, did. Uh, his life, and him setting the captives free. And, you know, so. Now, have you, have you managed to fill the church uh, with believers and non-believers? Tell me how, how you bring people into Encounter. Well, when we first started, we did, you know, outreaches, what we call outreach. And, right. and so we would do a typical thing. We'd go to a park and gather people and mm -hmm. you know um, we'd have a thousand people that would gather and it really helped us early on grow in, in the early stages and uh, and then we began to discover that it wasn't bearing lasting fruit it was bearing fruit we'd see new families people that were unchurched they'd come mm -hmm. and 
and be a part of the family and they'd grow and discover who God is and all that. Uh, but we learn that we have to become an outreach, not just do an outreach. So oh, it's not just something we do, but we want to empower every local, every mm-hmm. believer that's a part of the community to really just relationally connect with people, invite them to their table and invite them to church and, and not just event driven, but relationally driven evangelism. And so that, that kind of changed our paradigm. And so now we're seeing more of an organic thriving. We do grow. There are people that come from other churches, of course, you sure, know, sure. check out the new church in town. You right, know, yeah. we've been around for a little over eight years, but we definitely have more of a, I think, a healthy approach to what we call evangelism. We still do outreaches. Right. And you know our outreach pastor, Travis. And sure. He's awesome. Travis and, Gluckler. Yeah. Also known as Doc Jones. Yes. Yeah. He's incredible. Yeah. And we're honored to have him a part of the team. And yeah. um, so we still do intentional outreach, but we try to live it out from the heart. You know, like, let, let me see people with his eyes so that when I'm at the Starbucks, at the store, or at home, I'm actually, hey, neighbor, what's up? Here's my name. I want to get to know who you are. That's come, interesting. Come to my table. And, and so it's not like I want to lead you in the sinner's prayer and get a notch on, on my Christian belt. Right. But I actually want right. you to encounter right. the love of Jesus that I've encountered. And by the way, if you feel connected to a church community, I have one that you can be a part of. Mm-hmm. So the goal isn't to get him to church. It's really to for them to encounter the love of God. And then the rest happens. And personal involvement is a key to this too, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Um, how do you integrate them into the workings of the church? Because what I've discovered in my own walk and, and going to my own church, as well as others, the experience in interviewing others, is those who become solid in their faith and solid citizens of their church got involved somehow in the sort of the day-to-day operations of yeah. the church. And then they have skin in the game, if you will. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. How do you do that? And you know, it's it's healthy too for people to to we we need to learn how to give. And sometimes the reason we're not satisfied is because we're not self-giving. And that's who God is really. He and He wants us to learn yeah. self-giving love, serving, servanthood. That's really what Christianity is about. Sure. Loving and serving people. So you know, getting people involved in the community. I think uh, we're getting better at that. People do on their own. Yeah. We're, we try not to push people. We try to compel them by, hey, let's let's do this. You know, we need help here and there. And um, we just don't want to create a, an environment where they feel like they have to, but more so they want to. What are you passionate about? Let's. Di- what am I called to do? Well, what are you passionate about? Right. Let's discover that and let's add fuel to that fire and you know, and, and some people serve in churches and they get burnt out. And so we don't want to see that. We want yeah. people, we try to- You can overdo anything. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's one of the things I saw growing up after I got became a Christian and I got uh, acclimated to church culture, you mm-hmm. know, I learned that you could serve until you drop, you know, and it's not healthy. So we try to like once a month, you know, serve in a capacity in an area that you are passionate about. So that's how we like to approach that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we're getting better at it. But we have a great team of servant leaders yeah. in our church, amazing staff and uh, just incredible what God has done in eight years and how we've grown and we're thriving and just wonderful things are happening. So we're blessed. We're thankful. Oh, that's wonderful. I also noticed that uh, you call your kids pastor the kids pastor, which is interesting, yeah, you know, yeah. not the children's ministry, yeah. which is an interesting thing. Uh, tell me about him and, and what he's doing to bring the youngsters along. Our children's pastor. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we have different uh, leaders that that are pastoring the kids. Okay. So yeah. we're not a type the type of church to get caught up on titles. Right. We do believe in honor and and respect and that thing, but we, we believe that the function is much more important than the title. Sure. And I think it's healthy for churches to kind of get away from the title thing. Like, I don't make people call me Pastor Zach. They can if they want to. <laughs> yeah. You can call me Zach. Yeah. I want to be relational. If they feel comfortable with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, sure, yeah. You can call me Bishop if you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I honestly, I think that it's important that we capture the heart of God for the ministry. So our kids' ministry uh, they, they do such a great job. They shepherd the kids. They mm-hmm. love the kids. And, uh, and so, you know, we like to, and so if we do call them pastor, we call them, that's based on what they are really gifted with. Right. It's their gift. It's right. who they are. They yeah. love, they love people and they're shepherding well. So oh, that's neat. Uh, we're going to need to take a real brief break here, Zach. Um, but 
When we come back, I want to expand on that thought a little bit. I read recently that um, essentially uh, research has indicated that unless you get people uh, by the time they're teenagers um, to really become part of the family of Christ, um, you have a very tough time bringing them into the church. Yeah. And I want to discuss how that happens in Encounter. Uh, we'll be back with Zach Wexler, Senior Pastor of Encounter Church, right after this. Potential audience of more than 50 million people is reached every week by Las Vegas Tonight. To keep the important message of Christ's love on the air, we need your prayers and financial blessings. Please send your tax-deductible gift to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For a donation of $25 or more, we'll send you a copy of Dale Davidson's new book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints. You'll love these inspiring stories of Las Vegas Christians who are changing the world. Or donate to the ministry, or order Dale's book by going to vegasaints.org. That's vegasaints.org. Or call us today at 702-480-3989. That's 480-3989. God bless you. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson. I hope you're enjoying Las Vegas tonight. The guests we've had on the program are wonderful examples of Christians who take seriously Christ's command to love one another. In addition to the hundreds of television stations across the United States now carrying our show, we have been presented with the outstanding opportunity to bring these inspiring stories to people around the world. An international satellite network in the Russian and Ukrainian languages has asked us to provide them with episodes to be broadcast to millions. To make a gift to support this very special effort, please send your check or money order to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. To use your credit or debit card, call 702-480-3989. Thank you and God bless you. Drawn by the lights, glamour, and opportunities in Sin City, they come from all over the world, searching for their chance to be a pretty woman, a success, or maybe just to have a better life. Be somebody. What happened after they got here is literally changing the world. From the story of Tommy Scott, a former gang enforcer turned Christian evangelist, to the Hookers for Jesus Outreach Ministry, to the heart-wrenching story of Arturo Martinez, and his heroic act of forgiving the man who assaulted and murdered his wife and 10-year-old daughter. Las Vegas Tonight presents an extraordinary depiction of Las Vegas as a city of transformation from Sin City to Vegas Saints. Las Vegas Tonight, from Sin City to Vegas Saints, a collection of true stories of transformation, people whose lives were transformed, and people who are now transforming the world. Welcome back to Las Vegas tonight. We are sitting with and interviewing with Zach Wexler, who is the senior pastor of The Encounter Church, which I was surprised to learn has been around for eight years, you said. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. What motivated you to, uh, to say, I think I can be senior pastor of a brand new church? <laughs> How did that happen? Well, I got a little ministry experience under my belt, so to speak. I. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, led worship and I preached and oh, okay. associate pastor role. I led worship for Randall Cunningham's church. For oh a yeah, while. yeah. We've had yeah. Randall on the show. Wonderful. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, he's a good friend and yeah, he's a good guy. So you know, I I, uh, I just had something burning in my heart. I began to see the, the church as not so much what was wrong with the church, but what could be right or what's right with the church. So sure. And I really started loving the bride of Christ, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And got God's heart, and we just we just went for it. Yeah. You know, we uh, got God's heart for his church and uh, and we took some risks and we met, started in a coffee shop and just went for it. Yeah. You know, it's a funny thing. I, I mentioned before we went to break that that obviously growth in the church is largely dependent on bringing in young people. Right. Absolutely. But that's a difficult thing to do. Um, like most human beings, young people can be 
cynical about church. They mm -hmm. can be skeptical, at least. Yeah. Um, I saw some interviews recently on YouTube where somebody had stopped uh, young people who were 14, 15, 16 years old on the street and said, do you actually believe in God? And, and we got a lot of, well, you know, I think maybe, but I'm not sure, and maybe it's just designed to control the population, and you know, they have all these theories. <laughs> right. Um, but you do need to, to try to bring them into the body uh, early on. Um, Absolutely. What are the challenges in doing that, bringing you know, the young people along? I think um, if we look at really what the need is, I think what they are looking for is authentic. Yeah. And they're yeah. looking for a culture that's not so much um, organizational, business, corporate, but family, right. a family model. And, we, and I believe that's the kingdom of God. It's a right. family model. Yeah, sure. You know? I like that. Um, yeah. That picture where Jesus is teaching and the children come and kind of interrupt his sermon, so to speak. Right. And the disciples are like, you know, the rabbi's speaking, you know. Yeah, and, back off. And he says, no, 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 this is, this is the kingdom. Yeah. Let them come. Yeah. And so the acceptance of the next generation is huge. And we have to see them with God's eyes. And as a church, we, we thrive because we were open and loved uh, the younger generation. We have quite a few young adults and um, that generation. We're very multi-ethnic and multi-generational. Oh, good. But good. Yeah. I think if we, if we see the challenges, if they're looking for authentic. So then let's, we, you know, like when we started the church, we started a youth, right. a youth gathering. Yeah. We started in our home. Yeah. And, uh, and we just opened the doors and started with four kids, and it exploded to over 50 in our living room. And these kids just wanted love. They wanted, some of them didn't have parents. Some of them came from the projects, government projects in the area. And, mm -hmm. and so we learned they're looking for love, acceptance, and authentic, yeah. authentic, you know. Yeah. They, they've been, they've been uh, acclimated to maybe the, the way they see Christianity as maybe there's some toxic things that they, and they're like, oh, they had a bad taste. Right. And so we want to- Had a church hurt. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, or maybe even took on someone else's offense, their right. parents or whatever. So we want to represent who God is to them. Yeah. And so maybe somebody misrepresented the heart of God. And so we'd like to undo that and see healing come. That's a huge thing though today yeah. is some people need healing from domineering leadership and that kind of stuff. And this generation now, they're looking for the authentic. Yeah. And that's what's beautiful. I love it yeah. because if you just keep it real, yeah. they, they, you know, um, they love that. Yeah. They love the real. Yeah, what's, what's interesting is it almost doesn't matter what generation is presenting itself as being authentic as long as there is true authenticity, right? Absolutely. Because they can sense that, particularly millennials. Yes. And and what I say is, you know, there's there's no other ex, there's no other possible reason that young people like Tony Bennett other than <laughs> he's authentic. You know, I mean, he's almost ninety, I think. Wow. And and yet, you know, he's very popular with millennials. And part of that is, yeah, he comes from a, a much older generation than what they're used to. And maybe he's not singing their kind of music, but what they sense about That's him great. is, you know, he's this is an authentic guy. Yeah, you know? exactly. And so I, I think maybe that's that's what you're talking about. Absolutely, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, let's talk a little bit about about uh, the older generation as well. Yeah. Um, uh, baby boomers like myself and the older generation, and my parents' generation. Um, they're coming to a serious point in their lives, uh, looking for legacy, if you will, and also looking at the end of the road. Um, do you address any of that? Do you have people who are older in your church? We do, and they're and they're such a, a blessing because we need moms and dads. Yeah, the older yeah. shall teach the younger. The scripture yeah. says, and yeah. so we have to have value for that. Yeah. And. Uh, and so it, it all matters. And, and so we want to approach that with a way. And I, I think what's beautiful is that that generation, I really feel like God is, is doing something great where we're learning what legacy is. And mm -hmm. we're seeing things from a kingdom worldview sure. that we're not discouraged about. Well, maybe it didn't happen in our generation, but maybe we'll in the next or whatever. We want this great thing to happen or whatever in, our, in the church or in right. Christianity. Yeah. But yeah. there is great things happening. Yeah. And 
and we can leave a legacy and see things that, okay, the kingdom of God is advancing in the earth. Yeah. And, uh, and we don't have to think, oh, things are getting worse and worse and worse because statistically it's just not true. Yeah. And I think there's an awakening in the older generation where they're seeing like we are a part of the kingdom of God and we yeah. have advanced the kingdom of God uh, in our time and we're continuing to by loving this next generation and, and mentoring, yeah. taking on uh, mentoring or uh, a fathering, mothering role. It's probably a better term, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and the young younger people need to serve them as well. Absolutely. You know? I saw I saw a, an article in a local paper here not long ago about uh, a local Christian high school, Faith Lutheran, hmm. uh, has had a day of service uh, where they went out and served the community, and a lot of it had to do with with uh, older Americans. You know, they were going to senior homes and and just being kids around them. You That's know, awesome. and also opening themselves up to some mentoring, because you know people have experience, and in other cultures. Um, they really revere the older people, particularly Asian countries. Yeah, here true. not so much. Yeah, here not so much. We have a, we kind of have a youth culture fixation, you know, <laughs> which true. is interesting. Yeah, and it's yeah. healthy to have that honor. I, yeah, it really blesses me. I have five kids. Wow. And, wow. Uh, and so when my, I have two teenagers. Soon you don't have, have you don't have a lot of gray hair either. Yeah. How are you pulling that out? <laughs> Five uh, kids is a lot, thank but God. that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. But I, um, I love when they honor, like when they honor my parents or they honor the old. Yeah. It really blesses me, and I see, I'm like, that's that's good, you oh, know, yeah. that they have respect in their heart, and you know, not just for their teachers, and but for the older generation. Yeah, it's, it's healthy and it's important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it truly I, is. I think when we honor, uh, we receive a blessing from that. There's kind of like a grace, and we need the Father's blessing. Yes. We need a mother's blessing, and we need to learn how to be sons and daughters. Yes, it's yes. just family. It's the way God designed it. Yeah, and so in the church, it's it's a good thing. And yet it's we important. we what a need because there are so many fractured families. Yes, you know, divorce and abandonment, mm -hmm. and uh, and another uh, another thing that is troublesome to me is because of drugs, um, many older Americans are raising their grandkids. You know, it's it seems to be more than ever. I don't know whether you've seen a lot of that, but what Absolutely. a responsibility that becomes. Yeah, and there and sometimes the they. I mean, we can't literally adopt somebody, so to speak. You know, yeah. in, in a church, if I'm a member of a church, but sometimes the church community becomes that's the only family somebody has. Yeah, and we've seen that many times, and we've seen pimps, prostitutes, gang leaders, drug dealers come to Christ, right. their lives transformed, and really orphans, people that just don't have yeah. family. And if we can become the arms of God to them, it's just amazing how, like, wow, this is what family is. People actually love me, and, uh, and, and it shapes their identity. And then they can really, you know, dream and mm -hmm. live and Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know do do what God's created them to do. Yeah, and become yeah yeah exactly become who God wants them to be, and uh, to facilitate that. What an honor that is. Yeah, it's right? amazing yeah. watching it happen. <laughs> and I don't even have to be a part of it. You know, like yeah. if I if I just watch the church community as mature Christians love other people. It's Jesus, man. You know, oh, Jesus yeah. said, they'll know you're my disciples yeah. by the love you have for one another. Know us, know so us powerful. by our love. Yeah. Wow, that's a great. That's and a great and he said that right after Judas walked out the door, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a little twist to yeah, the context there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we're going to be back with Zach Wexler of the Encounter Church right after these messages. Potential audience of more than 50 million people is reached every week by Las Vegas tonight. To keep the important message of Christ's love on the air, we need your prayers and financial blessings. Please send your tax-deductible gift to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For a donation of $25 or more, we'll send you a copy of Dale Davidson's new book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints. You'll love these inspiring stories of Las Vegas Christians who are changing the world, or donate to the ministry, or order Dale's book by going to vegasaints.org. That's vegasaints.org. 
www.ohio.org or call us today at 702-480-3989. That's 480-3989. God bless you. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson. I hope you're enjoying Las Vegas tonight. The guests we've had on the program are wonderful examples of Christians who take seriously Christ's command to love one another. In addition to the hundreds of television stations across the United States now carrying our show, we have been presented with the outstanding opportunity to bring these inspiring stories to people around the world. An international satellite network in the Russian and Ukrainian languages has asked us to provide them with episodes to be broadcast to millions. To make a gift to support this very special effort, please send your check or money order to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. To use your credit or debit card, call 702-480-3989. Thank you and God bless you. Drawn by the lights, glamour, and opportunities in Sin City, they come from all over the world, searching for their chance to be a pretty woman, a success, or maybe just to have a better life. Be somebody. What happened after they got here is literally changing the world. From the story of Tommy Scott, a former gang enforcer turned Christian evangelist, to the Hookers for Jesus Outreach Ministry, to the heart-wrenching story of Arturo Martinez, and his heroic act of forgiving the man who assaulted and murdered his wife and 10-year-old daughter. Las Vegas Tonight presents an extraordinary depiction of Las Vegas as a city of transformation from Sin City to Vegas Saints. Las Vegas Tonight, from Sin City to Vegas Saints, a collection of true stories of transformation, people whose lives were transformed, and people who are now transforming the world. Welcome back to Las Vegas tonight. We're talking with Zach Wexler, who is the senior pastor of Encounter Church. Uh, he and his wife started the church eight years ago. You wouldn't think so, looking at this young face here. <laughs> but uh, he's been, you know, part of the vanguard of what's been happening in in churching right here in Las Vegas. And and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people don't know what a what a churched community we have. Uh, do, do you find it surprising that we have 800 churches in Southern Nevada? You know, after being a part of ministry, yeah, it was like, wow. Yeah. You know, it's interesting the way that people look at Las Vegas mm -hmm. is we see it as a, an evil place and it's named Sin City. And yeah. early on in the ministry, we tried to see it a little bit differently. We really felt like, you know, changing the name of the city, like Travis. Yeah, Even Pastor Travis, Travis at your church, he's calling Absolutely. it Saint City, and he's been working on that project yeah. for some time. And boy, what a blessing that Love would it. be! Yeah, and, and at this during the same time, we started calling it Revival City. Yeah, like maybe what happens in Vegas won't stay in Vegas. Yeah, but will spread out to the nations yeah. because God. Will will take what people call Sin City and displays love here. Oh yeah. And so it it was surprising, but now I'm like, this is God has plans for our city. Yeah. And uh, and and the church, and it's actually a good place for family, and people don't realize when they yeah. visit here because they stay on the strip. That's all. Of they course. See. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I say there's you know my little saying is there's two Las Vegases, one is three miles long and three blocks wide, and the rest is Phoenix. You know, and that's kind of, you know, we're a yeah. desert community, you know, a big a big city now of 2 million people. Yeah. Uh, there's room for 800 churches here. I also tell people we have 800 churches because we need them more. Yes. You know, and uh, we get 42 million visitors a year here, which is amazing. Yeah. So what I often say is that uh, the mission field comes to us. Do you get visitors often? Do people find your church when they're here visiting? We do. do yeah, you? yeah. I mean, there's times people are in town, they want to attend a church, or you know, of course, if they're visiting family, and, right? You know, and so they either are uh, referred to us, or they find us online or social media or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about um, the church to come, the yes. 21st century, as we as we head further into the 21st century. What's church look like in, I don't know, 30 to 40 years in your view? 
be a seer here for us. Be a prophet. Yeah, well, and I'll try think? my best. I, I really feel like God's doing something great in the church, in the body of Christ. Yeah. And uh, I really believe walls are coming down. Do you? And I'm not a, opposed to denominations. Um, I think when we step into denominationalism, where it becomes yeah. very rigid, then we get into trouble. But there are, are different uh, expressions in the body of Christ that are healthy and needed. And so I see the church coming to a place of seeing the beauty in that diversity. Mm. There is unity only found in diversity. Unity is not uniformity. And so I see God doing great things in the church. And I really believe that there's an awakening to the sacred message of the gospel, which is about what Jesus came to bring. He came to reveal the heart of the Father. And so people are waking up and like, this is who God is. Mm -hmm. And it's transforming the mm -hmm. church at large. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so uh, we're, we're learning to think for ourselves in a way where uh, living authentic and being free from that, where God really wants us to encounter Him yeah, and, yeah, and encounter what church really should look like, which is healthy community yeah. and loving and serving one another. And then in that, realizing what Jesus accomplished, who we are in Christ. And that's our core values as a church. Encounter God, encounter authentic community, and uh, and encounter our identity in Christ. Yeah, And so there's like an awakening that. to even the experience. People are afraid of experience, but to experience God's presence, God's love. It's all a part of uh, Christianity, you sure. know? And so it's healthy. And I, so I see the church, to answer your question, to, I really see the church moving to a place where worship is a tremendous part of the yeah. experience. All kinds of worship. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and so, uh, and, and then of course there's preaching and, and, but I think that's gonna turn into a lot more of a discussion in a home setting or a small group setting. Ah, I was going to ask you about that, yeah. Uh, the church, obviously, 2,000 years ago, grew out of a home-based environment. Absolutely. And, uh, and it seems that at the vanguard of, of church in today's world, small groups or cell groups, as they call them, are important. Uh, is Encounter uh, doing that? Is yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. we have small groups, and, and we really want to see that thrive more. We yeah. purposely don't have a midweek service. Right. Because we want to cultivate the house to house. So you right. see in the New Testament, Acts chapter 2, the temple model and the house to house. And so we have, right. we're not opposed to the temple model. We gather two times on Sunday. Yeah. And we believe in the, you know, let's worship together, the celebration service, and it's beautiful. And then, but, you know, meeting together right. in community, life on life, and uh, raising up pe leaders and people that want to shepherd and, and disciple others is just key. You yeah. know, having a, a pastor for every pew, so to speak, right. even though we don't have pews. But we, yeah. we, we yeah. want to yeah. raise up leaders because you can't yeah. have discipleship without relationship. Yeah. You can't have relationship an hour and a half on a Sunday morning. And that's it. It's very limited. Yeah. It's surface. Yeah. So in order to go deep, absolutely, I do see the church not doing just one or just the other, but both yeah. the home and the Sunday gathering, whatever our weekend gathering is, and uh, both are important. And getting deeper into the Word. Part of the criticism of the contemporary church is that it's, uh, it's a mile wide and an inch deep, you know, like the yeah. Platte River, you know, and, and <laughs> you were talking about Denver. Yeah, Colorado. You know? yeah. yeah. Um, but it's much more than that, and there's a lot to be learned, and there's only so much you can preach about, you know, if you, even if you preach an hour or more <laughs> on Sundays. Um, it can take an awful long time to get through the Bible. So what, what do we do as a modern church, as a 21st century church, to foster that, that deeper knowledge of the Word? Not be afraid of uh, going deep in Scripture, I think is, is really... Yeah. I think sometimes people, they water stuff down because it's, uh, you know, people can acclimate to that quicker. And it's like yeah. just a little, a little motivational speech. And so we like to... I'm not opposed to, you know, simple message, but we really like to go deep in the context mm -hmm. of Scripture, even if it's only for 30 minutes or so. Yeah. Um, and then let that become a conversation piece to go deeper together. We reason together. Right, yeah. And we, and we search the Scriptures together. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I think that if pastors are not afraid, to, let's go deeper. Yeah. And it doesn't have to look one way. Let's let, you know, it doesn't have to be verse by verse per se. It could be thematic or topical. Yeah. But having... Uh, you know, like a message that really is, uh, you know, we're intellectual, but we're also passionate. Yeah. So we have to, you know, we have to grow. We have to be afraid, not afraid to give people solid food. Yes. They want it. 
Yeah. And uh, and so let's you know give it to them. Yeah. And Feed to them. some extent, and I'm not sure how this is going to play out, but there is a there is seems to be a need among millennials anyway to get back to liturgy. Yeah. You know, like what's the form here? Yeah. You know, and and how do you address that need? That you encounter? know, it's very interesting you say that because I really feel like in the next decade or so, we will see a, an awakening to some of those sacred things Yeah, where it won't be the only form, but it will help us understand who we are, where yeah. we've come from. Because a lot of people don't even know church history. Yes. They've been in church 30 years and yeah. it's like they, they know a little bit of the Reformation, but everything that happened before that wasn't good. So, but that's really not true. <laughs> no, it's not. There's, there's such a It's beauty. one book. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's a beauty to mm -hmm. the body of Christ. Yeah. and. And church history. So I think we're going to see churches grow into some of this, uh, you know, where, you know, you have maybe charismatic church that you wouldn't see them do communion every Sunday. I right. think you're going to see them do communion every Sunday and really? give more of attention to it, yeah. to the sacredness of what the Eastern and the Catholic church may do. Right. And so as Protestants, it's once a month. I think it's turning. It already is. It's turning. You're seeing that. Huh? Yeah. And so yeah. there's an awakening to the ancient gospel and there's an awakening to some of that uh, in, in our own tradition, you know, like we believe in maybe the gifts of the spirit and all that. Yeah. But then we glean from the other parts of the, sure. the body of Christ, hundreds of millions of Christians all around the world. And we're just one sliver. There's oh, yeah. a lot more to this. Oh yeah. And so we can learn and cross pollinate and grow from that. So I do see that, uh, influencing the church. Oh, we're seeing it in, in worship too. Um, modern, uh, worship music using old hymns. Yeah, you know, and integrating those into their songs and so on. It's really and it's, it's rich. Yeah, it's, it's more it's theology. It's exciting. And, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, we're going to take another brief break and come back and wrap up. Um, we've been having a fascinating conversation with Senior Pastor Zach Wexler of the Encounter Church here in Las Vegas. We'll be back with more after these brief messages potential audience of more than 50 million people is reached every week by Las Vegas Tonight. To keep the important message of Christ's love on the air, we need your prayers and financial blessings. Please send your tax-deductible gift to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. For a donation of $25 or more, we'll send you a copy of Dale Davidson's new book, Las Vegas Tonight, from Sin City to Vegas Saints. You'll love these inspiring stories of Las Vegas Christians who are changing the world. Or donate to the ministry, or order Dale's book by going to vegasaints.org. That's vegasaints.org. Or call us today at 702-480-3989. That's 480-3989. God bless you. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson. I hope you're enjoying Las Vegas tonight. The guests we've had on the program are wonderful examples of Christians who take seriously Christ's command to love one another. In addition to the hundreds of television stations across the United States now carrying our show, we have been presented with the outstanding opportunity to bring these inspiring stories to people around the world. An international satellite network in the Russian and Ukrainian languages has asked us to provide them with episodes to be broadcast to millions. To make a gift to support this very special effort, please send your check or money order to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. To use your credit or debit card, call 702 480-3989. Thank you, and God bless you. Drawn by the lights, glamour, and opportunities in Sin City, they come from all over the world, searching for their chance to be a pretty woman, a success, or maybe just to have a better life. Be somebody. What happened after they got here is literally changing the world. From the story of Tommy Scott, a former gang enforcer turned Christian evangelist, to the Hookers for Jesus Outreach Ministry, to the heart-wrenching story of Arturo Martinez and his heroic act of forgiving the man who assaulted and murdered his wife and 10-year-old daughter. Las Vegas Tonight 
presents an extraordinary depiction of Las Vegas as a city of transformation from Sin City to Vegas Saints. Las Vegas Tonight, from Sin City to Vegas Saints, a collection of true stories of transformation, people whose lives were transformed, and people who are now transforming the world. Welcome back to Las Vegas Tonight. We've been talking with Senior Pastor Zach Wexler of the Encounter Church here in Las Vegas. And the website, by the way, is EncounterLV.com, right? That's correct. And we'll put that up and so everybody knows how to, how to reach you and how to come to the church. When, when are your services? What time on Sunday? Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. 9 and 11, yeah. yeah. Those are both civilized times. Yes. Not too early, not too late. <laughs> Those are good times. Yeah. Those are good times. Let me. Uh, we were talking during the break about your new book. You have a book coming out. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me a little bit about the book. What it, What is it called and what's the message? So it's called Scandalous Love. Scandalous Love. Yeah. That's a good title. And I it's like really that. just yeah. about the outrageous love of God that we see revealed in the life and the uh, work of Jesus. Right. Um, and so I think uh, it's a little bit of our story. And, and so it's a little bit of, you know, testimonies from how we've seen transformation by the power of God's love yeah. and acceptance and forgiveness yeah. and, and just really releasing that over people. Sure. Uh, and just it's a it's about the grace of God and how it transforms. It's yeah. been transforming for 2000 years and yeah. continues to. And uh, and so we're excited. But it really is just about the outrageous love of God that's scandalous to religion it's scandalous to the archaic understanding of how we think God is right you know like we think God's mad at us or Jesus came to reveal what the father looks like and yeah. he is the like Hebrews 1 3 says he is the expression the exact representation yeah. of God's being yeah um, and so re really that's what it's about who God is and, and how that affects how we see everything we see each other yeah. and how we see humanity uh, and and it, it, I think it'll really help people um, that just, you know, I think everybody deals with rejection and, and hurts and, and this and that. But it, it's also about evangelism and the message of the good news. Yeah. What's interesting, you know, and you just touched on it, is so many people grow up in the church with a feeling that God is a judge. God is condemning. Yeah. God can't love us because of our sin and it can't get rid of that yeah and so when you when you introduce the love of god and not only salvation grace but living grace yes you know he's with you 24 7 it changes your complete outlook on what religion can be yeah. what god can be like what church can be like and that's hard to communicate with somebody who is locked in and you don't have to be young to be cynical about that. Yeah. I mean, I have friends my age and older who say, I want nothing to do with the church. Mm. And I guarantee if you dig long enough, you're going to get into something that happened, right? Yep, absolutely. In the church, in the, yeah. So do you, are you going to deal with that feeling in, in the book at all? Yeah, I think, you know, um, if we look at the life of Jesus, if he reveals to us, who the Father is. Obviously, we, we get our understanding of God through Scripture, but ultimately right. that all points to Jesus. It's like in John 5, 39, where he tells the Pharisees, you search the Scriptures diligently, thinking that that's where yeah. you're going to find eternal life. Yeah. But you don't, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, but you don't realize they point to me. Yeah. And so the Word of God, lowercase w, points to the Word of God, uppercase w, Jesus. He's right. the eternal logos. And, right. and he reveals to us what God looks like. So if we look at the life of Jesus, I don't see a judge God. Mm -hmm. I see a father. You know, the story of the prodigal son shows us what God looks like. In essence, you know, this guy who's a representation of all of us, yeah. who just wastes his life and runs away. And, and then he becomes honest with his stuff. And, uh, and it's beautiful to see in the life of Jesus the way he loved honest sinners. Yeah. And he seemed to love honest sinners more than hypocritical saints, although he loved them all. Yeah. But yeah. there's something about just being honest with our sickness and not trying to medicate it with something. Yeah. But going yeah. to, if I'm sick, I'm not going to go to a judge. I'm going to go to a doctor. Right. Jesus is the great physician. Right. And, and sin is that disease. It's not just a moral shortcoming or a legal thing. It's yeah. not just the courtroom thing. It's, 
it's a sickness. Yeah. And so it reigns in the cosmos. But in Jesus, we have freedom from that. And, uh, and so I look at in the life of Jesus, like the story of the prodigal son, he reveals just what God looks like. And, and not only an amazing father, but far beyond the most amazing dad we could imagine. Right, you know, right. In, at the very end of that story in Luke 15, the story of the prodigal son, uh, you see the, the father just waiting for his son to come home. And uh, as soon as he sees his son, he runs to kiss him. And that's a symbol of forgiveness. But in the first century, this story was a little scandalous because old men did not run. They were respectable. It was respectable. Un- undignified. It was undignified. Yeah. So he became undignified, yeah. kind of like King David. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. it shows the love of God, yeah. that God yeah. pursues humanity in their darkness. Right. And he comes right in the middle of it. And in Jesus, he be- God becomes flesh in the person of Jesus right. and pitches his tent like he dwelled among us. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Right in the midst of our darkness, he brings his light, his love, his acceptance. And that's really what it's about. And yeah. so it undoes that toxic image of judge God. Right. Not that there isn't a final judgment. We believe that. That's sure. part of the, yeah. our eschatology. But there's more to it. But what is judgment? Yeah. Judgment is the light of God and the love of God exposing everything yeah. to where we're just like, all right, you know, I, I need you. Heal me. Free me. Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's very powerful. The revelation of Father God you know, really heals us from that mean image of God, which is really kind of a pagan, archaic, Zeus-like God. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's Throwing not the God, thunderbolts at us. Right. It's not yeah. the God Jesus yeah. reveals to us. Yeah. He, he came yeah. to set the record straight and to get rid of our confusion about who God is. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, and I'm certainly not going to put words in Christ's mouth. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but um, in a way, when, when John the Baptist said, as I decrease, you must increase to Christ, knowing that his work was about done, mm-hmm. uh, it's, almost, it's almost as though Christ was thinking or saying, um, John, you've done half of the job really well. Okay, you're my kinsman, and I'm not criticizing you, but you've scared the hell out of them, literally, <laughs> right? He has scared them, you know? But mm-hmm. then the love of Christ comes along and yeah, does, does the rest of the job. And that's yeah. beautiful because what you just said, really, that's kind of like he's the last Old Testament prophet, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's the fading of that old and the beginning yeah. of the new covenant yeah. that Jesus came to establish. You know, Hebrews 8.13 says, which was written right before 70 AD, says the old covenant is fading and is passing away and will soon be obsolete. Yeah. And we can't live out of the old covenant anymore. No. And so Jesus came to establish Thanks something the Lord. totally different, <laughs> yeah. a new and better. Yeah. And be yeah. conscious of his finished work on the cross, yes. his death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. That he took our sin, defeated the enemy, and, uh, and defeated death. Yeah. And yeah. so it's powerful. Yeah. Um, Zach, we only have a couple of minutes left. I want to give you the opportunity to invite people to come to Encounter. Uh, so please give them the, the web address. Absolutely. And I understand that every fall you have a, uh, a conference yes. that you'd like to tell people about. So yeah. uh, that's your camera if you want to do that. And then when you're done, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, saying a prayer to lead our viewers to Christ. Because Absolutely. we have millions of people who watch this program. And we know many are uh, unchurched and, and unbelievers, and we want to give them a chance to come to Christ. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks again for having me. Oh, you bet. It was you such bet. an honor. Yeah, it's so been it's great good. fun. Thank great. you for coming. Yeah. So uh, we meet every Sunday, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Our church website is EncounterLV.com, and so feel free to come. We just invite you uh, to be part of that. Our conference is in the fall. It's in September. And so um, you can go to lovexlv.com to find out more information about that. So it's love and then the letter X. The letter X and then lv.com. Okay, great. And the name of the conference is Scandalous Love. There you go. Oh, okay. (laughs) And hopefully the book will be close to being done. Yes. Then, yeah. 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 It's scheduled to release in the spring. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we're getting close. (laughs) Okay, that's great. And now, if you wouldn't mind uh, in in leading us in the the sinner's prayer. Absolutely. Okay. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, man, I really want to know this this loving father, 
Um, Jesus came to reveal to us this love like no other. And, uh, and I just want to pray for you. And maybe you got a bad taste of religion. Maybe you knew God as a judge and uh, someone who's mad. I want to tell you, God's not mad at you. He's mad about you. He loves you. And this is why Jesus came, to bring us acceptance, healing, and forgiveness. So if you would, if you want to just close your eyes, if you'd like, and just pray this with me. Just say, Father, I, I give you my heart, and I receive your forgiveness. Yes, Lord. I receive the forgiveness that Jesus came to bring, the healing that Jesus came to bring. And just invite right now. Say, Lord, I invite your spirit to fill my life, to heal me, to set me free in Jesus' name. And Father, I just pray for everyone watching that your presence, your love would just permeate their entire mind, soul, and heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God is good. Yeah, God is Bless great. You, Zach Wexler, who is the senior pastor of Encounter Church right here in Las Vegas, has been our guest, and it's been an honor to have him. Come back again. Awesome. We'd love to. Be honored to. <laughs> and thank you all so much for watching. As always, um, I, I try to close the same way. Please walk with him. God bless you, and we'll see you this time next week. Hello, I'm Dale Davidson. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Las Vegas Tonight. Allow me to take just a few moments to let you know how you can learn more about some of the fascinating guests that I've interviewed. My new book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints, is now available around the world. In it, I profile amazing people who make Las Vegas something much more than just a place to party. These compelling stories often tell of people who came to Las Vegas for reasons much different than the innovative ministries they ended up leading right here in Sin City. Take, for example, Tommy Scott, known as Hitman to his fellow members of an infamous gang in South Central Los Angeles. Tommy was serving time in a Las Vegas jail and contemplating suicide when a couple of pastors visited him in the lockup and led him to Christ. Tommy immediately began studying the Word and has become an on-fire evangelist and Christian author. Then there's Annie Meadows. Annie began life in a rural part of Kentucky, increasingly was fascinated with the occult, and eventually became a full-fledged witch. Rejecting anything having to do with God, she angrily vowed never to attend church or have anything at all to do with religion. Then, like Tommy, she had an encounter with the living Christ and now travels the world as a gospel singer and writes Christian children's books. Pastor Chris Chappell was an avowed atheist who also wanted nothing to do with the Lord. He was a successful businessman who felt he surely didn't need Jesus. His wife and father-in-law convinced him to attend church, and he felt a stirring that made him investigate the Bible's claims. Telling the Lord that he needed answers to his objections, he found those answers in a supernatural way and is now leading a remarkable church, Casa de Luz, in what's called the Naked City, which is a neighborhood just off the famous Las Vegas Strip. This formerly crime-ridden area is now experiencing a remarkable turnaround, and his church is serving that community in amazing ways. Doc Jones traveled to Las Vegas from New York on a personal mission to make as much money as he could. A born entrepreneur, he started a photography business that specialized in taking pictures of groups of partiers at the hot nightclubs on the Strip. He then learned that by referring young guys to the city strip clubs, he could pick up lots of cash from the club's owners. That evolved into sending young women who were wannabe strippers to these so-called gentlemen's clubs, and then he managed their careers. Eventually, he felt so empty and despondent that he, too, thought seriously of suicide. Hearing a sermon about the prodigal son caused him to dedicate his life to Christ. Now an exceptional musician and composer of gospel rap, hip-hop, and spoken word genres, he is helping change Las Vegas from a place where sin abounds to a city where grace abounds more. Pastor Clegg Seth 
was an aspiring actor and screenwriter in Hollywood and a strong Christian who wanted to make a real difference for Christ in the entertainment world. But the Lord called him to establish a crisis hotline for runaway teens who were coming to Hollywood to pursue their silver screen dreams. He then started halfway houses for men and women with substance abuse and other problems. He also helped set up a similar men's home in Las Vegas. At one point, he developed a gambling habit, but the Lord delivered him from that problem, and he now devotes his life to sharing Christ with men in prison, serving seniors in a church setting, along with visits to nursing homes and hospitals. He has continued his quest to influence Hollywood through a ministry called The Christian Studio. I personally really look up to Clegg Seth as a model of how a Christian should live and serve others. He truly is one of the Vegas saints. Read these stories and more in this 226-page book, Las Vegas Tonight, From Sin City to Vegas Saints. You can get your copy in several different ways. Go to my website, vegassaints.org, or order it on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. It's just $15.99 plus shipping. For more information or to make a donation to Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries that will help us keep this program on the air, please call 702-480-3989. Or you can write to us at Dale Wynn Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara, Suite 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. And thank you so much for watching Las Vegas Tonight. Drawn by the lights, glamour, and opportunities in Sin City, they come from all over the world, searching for their chance to be a pretty woman, a success, or maybe just to have a better life. Be somebody. What happened after they got here is literally changing the world. From the story of Tommy Scott, a former gang enforcer turned Christian evangelist, to the Hookers for Jesus Outreach Ministry, to the heart-wrenching story of Arturo Martinez and his heroic act of forgiving the man who assaulted and murdered his wife and 10-year-old daughter. Las Vegas Tonight presents an extraordinary depiction of Las Vegas as a city of transformation from Sin City to Vegas Saints. Las Vegas Tonight, from Sin City to Vegas Saints, a collection of true stories of transformation, people whose lives were transformed, and people who are now transforming the world. You've been watching Las Vegas Tonight with Dale Davidson. Send your tax-deductible gifts to Dale Davidson Ministries, 9030 West Sahara Avenue, number 255, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. Or call 702-480-3989. Thanks for watching.